jubilation in Kuwait City after seven months of Iraqi occupation. And U.S. forces have cut off all escape for Iraqi troops as Saddam Hussein comes up with still another offer. This is NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Tonight, America at War. Reporting from Kuwait City, Tom Brokaw with Jane Pauley in Washington. Good evening from the heart of Kuwait City, which still is without power tonight, even though it has been liberated now after seven months of Iraqi occupation. And there are very dramatic developments tonight that indicate this war finally is coming rapidly to a close. It has been announced at the White House in just the past few moments that President Bush will address the nation tonight at 9 o'clock. And at the Defense Department now, NBC's Fred Francis, who has been speaking with senior Pentagon officials. Fred, what's the latest word? Tom, the senior officials say the war is winding down. The senior official characterized the fighting as mostly over, and they're calling it here at the Pentagon the four-day war. We can tell you that the senior official said that the bombing, American and Allied bombing of Baghdad and Iraq has slowed way down. And today there was a major, major battle on the road outside of Basra called Highway 8. The U.S. won that battle. It could be, according to this official, the last and only big battle of this war. Saddam Hussein, who started the war with 4,200 tanks, has far fewer than that tonight, probably less than 500 and uh, his Republican Guard is in its death throes. And today, General Norman Schwarzkopf revealed that finishing the Republican Guards in Iraq was as much a mission as liberating Kuwait. If I'm to accomplish the mission that I was given, and that's to make sure that the Republican Guard is rendered incapable of conducting the type of heinous act that they've conducted so often in the past, what has to be done is these forces continue to attack across here and put the Republican Guard out of business. In an extraordinary briefing that gave the world, including Saddam, the first look at how the Iraqi army had been routed, Schwarzkopf crowed about U.S. forces like the 101st Airborne landing deep in Iraq and how he could have taken Baghdad. Ladies and gentlemen, when we were here, we were 150 miles away from Baghdad and there was nobody between us and Baghdad. If it had been our intention to take Iraq, if it had been our intention to destroy the country, if it had been our intention to overrun the country, we could have done it unopposed for all intents and purposes from this position at that time. The victory is almost complete. One senior Pentagon source predicted the fighting could end tomorrow. Officials said the American losses are remarkably light. At day's end, 23 Americans had died in the air war, 28 in ground combat, 28 from a Scud missile attack, including two women, for a total of 79 dead, and 53 missing or captured. And the fighting continues. Two American divisions have trapped two Republican Guard units near Basra, Iraq. And an allied force of 80,000 is closing in on the last three Guard units which are also trying to flee. Where we are today is we now have a solid wall across the north of the 18th Airborne Corps consisting of the units shown right here attacking straight to the east. We have a solid wall here again of the seventh corps also attacking straight to the east the forces that they are fighting right now are the forces of the republican guard one pentagon officer said the oily fires set by iraqis had backfired on them thermal gun sights on u.s tanks worked flawlessly but the hazy oily skies blinded the iraqi tank crews we've had several anecdotal reports today of enemy who were saying to us that they couldn't see anything through their sights and all of a sudden uh, their tank exploded when their tank was hit by our sights in that two-day running tank battle, military leaders report that while most of Iraq's tanks have been put out of action, not one American tank has been destroyed. And for the first time today, General Schwarzkopf reported that thousands of Iraqis had deserted, and many had been killed. Classified estimates put the losses at 80,000. There was, there was a very, very large number of dead in these units, a very, very large number of dead. Uh, we even found them when we went into the units ourselves and found them in the trench lines. There were very heavy desertions. At one point, we had reports of desertion rates of more than 30% of the units that were along the front here. Well, Tom, for all intents and purposes, this war is over. In the last four hours, most of the information in that report has changed so dramatically. Uh, the senior Pentagon official said there is only one Iraqi division left. That is the Hammurabi division, and it is running for Iran. 
and at daylight hours there will be clear skies and it may not make it. Tom? That will be even more welcome news here in Kuwait, of course, and we want to go to the White House now, where NBC's John Cochran is standing by with more news on that late development tonight that the president is prepared to talk to the nation at what, John, 9 p.m. tonight, Eastern Time? That's right, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. The White House officials will say, even privately, all they'll say is that, is that the president will announce a course of action. We don't know what that is. We are told he will not appeal to Saddam Hussein to stop the fighting. Today, Saddam tried to uh, get a ceasefire through the United Nations. It didn't work. With complete victory so near, President Bush showed little interest in Saddam's call for a ceasefire. The president said that so far, U.S. forces have done everything he could have hoped for, and more. The news was continues to be very, very good, uh, very, very heartening. Uh, I know that all Americans took great joy in the beginning of the liberation of Kuwait, Kuwait City, but the liberation of Kuwait, the country, is almost complete. Bush said visitors to the White House today caught him on an upbeat day, a bit of understatement, the kind usually associated with the British, like Foreign Secretary Douglas Hurd. Bush and Hurd agreed that Saddam's latest attempt to get a ceasefire won't work. At the UN, the Iraqi ambassador said his country was now willing to accept all 12 UN resolutions on the Gulf crisis. But a letter from the Iraqi foreign minister, Tariq Aziz, indicated Iraq was imposing its own conditions. The Iraqis are still conditioning their acceptance of the resolutions on lifting the economic embargo. If that's the case, obviously, it isn't what we've been looking for. Secretary of State Baker said economic sanctions against Saddam might continue after the war. And the arms embargo will definitely continue. We uh, will want to make certain, at least with respect to arms, that there's some sort of uh, constraints upon uh, rearmament and the shipment of uh, arms into uh, that country, and particularly weapons of mass destruction. And tonight, when President Bush goes on national television, we believe he will talk about the post-war era, and specifically about a post-war Iraq. I am told that the president will not, however, announce a ceasefire. Tonight, the UN Security Council has called on Iraq to accept all 12, all 12 UN resolutions concerning the Gulf crisis. U.S. officials say that even if Saddam agrees, he's already finished as a military power. Tom? Thanks, John. And tragically, the people of Kuwait City probably can't hear that news tonight because this town has been so devastated by seven months of Iraqi rule. But then today, during the daylight hours, the people of Kuwait City were out cheering everyone. The Americans, the Egyptians, the Saudis, they even cheered a convoy of journalists as we drove into town. NBC's Brad Willis tonight on a long night and a day in the Kuwaiti capital. It was a day of triumph for the Kuwaiti people and their American allies as U.S. Marines rolled into Kuwait City. Kuwaitis of all ages and walks of life applauded and embraced these fighting men, blessing them for the liberation of their nation. And I have only one message to say. God bless your heart, America. Really, I would like to thank, to, to shake every American hand while they are coming to help and to let our country free. In the streets, they danced and chanted, George Bush, George Bush. A refrain in honor of a Western leader that before this war would have been unthinkable in the Islamic world. But on the outskirts of Kuwait City today, sporadic clashes with small groups of Iraqis continued. On the highways, more of Saddam Hussein's men lay dead from overnight fighting. He's wounded. In the morning light, those who survived sought to surrender. Many here in this war-torn city bitterly recalled what the Iraqis brought upon their nation. They took her, and after a month, they killed her, and they brought her to, the, to her house, and they just shot her there. She was dead, but they had to, you know, shoot her in front of everybody around the house. But despite the war, the brutality, the devastation of their city, the people of Kuwait today celebrated something far more important their freedom, and they also celebrated the Americans who helped them win it.
Brad Willis, NBC News, Kuwait City. And tonight, as it looks, the entire war may be over. We'll return in a moment with Jane Pauley, talks with Tom Aspel in Baghdad.